think the key thing with the dry heathland is that uh, it's actually not too difficult to habitat define because it's actually sort of dominated by you know what we term as dwarf shrubs so that's uh, you know gorse uh, and uh, the heathers and I'm sitting here in a, in a cushion of uh, bilberry and as we look around we can see bell heather and uh, there's a little bit of gorse further on. The key thing is that uh, the, these dwarf shrubs will occupy more than 25% of the, the area. Uh, we can see we've got the very pretty sort of uh, wavy hair grass here, so grasses can be an important component and uh, dry acid grassland very often will sort of occur in a mosaic with dry, dry heathland. But when you're in a situation like we are here, where quite clearly the dwarf shrubs are probably occupying you know, 90 plus percent of the, uh, you know, the total area, then quite clearly that, that then becomes dry heathland. Heather, heather and uh, bilberry, uh, you know, they're the ones that most commonly that you'll actually find that actually define the habitat. Yes, I think uh, once again you will you know, potentially find this in sort of you know perhaps some sort of moorland areas but uh, I think the, the key thing here is the fact that it's actually dry dry heathland and uh, the, the sort of the subtle differences that take take place are that uh, you know if you start to see a lot of purple moor grass uh, and then perhaps you know quite a lot of uh, heath rush and uh, and then you start picking up uh, things like sphagnums um, quite clearly then you're moving away from dry heathland into to wet wet heath yes that's the golden rule 25 percent less than 25 percent cover of the dwarf shrubs so the heathers and the gorse and uh, and then the rest of it made up by dry acid grassland then you've got dry acid grassland uh, and then conversely if you've got more than 25 percent cover of the dwarf shrubs then it's dry dry heathland mm -hmm.